Can you scoot over more? So uh, he can sit? Actually, we already alive. We already have uh, the alley and everything. So. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> okay. You can see Oh. Okay, just put that screen there. Tell me when we're live live. Oh shit, hi. Oh, I need, oh, sorry. Uh, welcome to the Kinetic Experience. We have a really special um, guest today. Miss Paint the Lady, super famous. Uh, one of the most epic everybody person. Any painted? Sorry. <laughs> Help me out. That's great. I hope I can live I'm up to the standard shit. you're setting. Well, you right right Stevens, I'm like, hey, welcome to Kinetic Experience. We're the Kinetic Experience, like we call it the, the he calls it the octagon, I think. Oh. So, anyways, yeah. now that you're here, thank you so much. This is an thank awesome you. show because we just kind of like threw you in in the last like five minutes. We're like, Alex, come on, join our show. She's like, and do I don't you, like being she's on like, camera. She's like, do you do you have a camera and a tripod? I'm like, yeah, kind of something like that. Oh my like, god. Like seven tripods and eight cameras, but you know. This is legit. So this is Ava Demi. I'm Janet Corton. And I'm Alexandra Dixon and Miss Painted Demi. And we have over there on camera also Miss Emily. Hi. So Emily's also running our, Emily's self-directed learning her, her skills as a video producer. So she's really, really taking the self-directed learning uh, and applying it on a daily basis right now, recently. I'm impressed. This is so cool. So this is a continuation of the conversation we actually started yesterday, which was around self-directed learning, because we were going to go to Ascend, where we've been working there to, to create a school. And that was a really awesome meeting, and things were going really well, and so we're super excited about that. Uh, and we were kind of just wanting to continue, because we had some questions yesterday, and um, today we had a great conversation with, with Alex here about self-directed learning, and about some of the principles, and some of the guidelines, and the thought processes behind it. So. Janica, would you like to share a little bit about self-directed learning as we kick off this part two? Sure. Um, so self-directed learning is basically you direct your own learning. <laughs> it's really simple. Yeah, but how do I know the kids are learning? They just know. <laughs> it just happens, they learn. So self-directed learning is about following your curiosity and imagination and diving into the things that interest you. Okay, so. can I? You said, hey, fuck you. So, <laughs> oh, this is so good. Oh, my God. The rules of engagement. Do you push engagement... Can you curse or something? Huh? We're going to get kicked out. So... Oh. Ascend, we'll, we'll be at Ascend for about four hours until we're packed up and leave. <laughs> they have a no cussing policy on campus. And I, don't, I, I mean, but Janica, whew, like a sailor. So, yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> my mouth is so bad that my daughter doesn't curse because she hates it. She's like, I told you, like, whenever I'm mad, yeah. she's like, well, I'm not going to listen to you whenever you're cursing like that. So whenever you decide to use that better language, so we'll talk. See, I wish my... Is that really the case? Huh? Is that really... That's really how my daughter is. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. She yeah. That. That's awesome. Mine's not. So yeah, we're not gonna we're gonna have a problem there because he told us a story about how he flat out fired someone Who did? like on the spot, the owner of Ascend, for cussing in front of a minor. Was so that like that was live just now? No, that well, when was that? That no, was just now. Hey, quick question this on Facebook. Yes, I'm this is seeing, live. Um, <laughs> not TK right going right. live in ten minutes and twelve seconds. Like still right now? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought we were. Still but on Twitch, I see the live stream. Can't edit that. It's already done. One second, guys. What? You keep, I mean, I mean, it's, they go at the same time, so mine's also frozen, so it could also be Wi-Fi. Oh, did it crap yeah, out no, again? Yeah, it's, it's looking good on Facebook, and just on, in, on, on Facebook, it doesn't look like it switched over to our live feed, so the um, fun stuff of live feed. Can you guys, Robert, can you check Facebook? I'm All right, good enough, so we'll keep on going. Yes. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's live live there, so. Yeah, yeah, that one's fine. What is it on Facebook? Is it the kinetic? It's just no. It's on my name, my personal page. Oh. Yeah, it's publicly shared. Awesome. Yeah, so there's a no cussing policy over there. So. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna suck. For it's us. just Facebook. Is. <laughs> so already I'm thinking about like we have to. I don't know how. Like I. I well, I, I would. I would. We'll learn and we'll be able to do it, but I mean we're gonna need some leeway to like get through the process of. 
Potty mouthing ourselves. <laughs> Potty mouthing. I'm sorry, I missed this part. I don't know that this is going to work out if I have to, you know, <laughs> pretend like I'm not an adult person <laughs> living in the United States where I can yeah. have freedom of speech. <laughs> For now, I mean, while I still have rights, I'm going to use them. Right? Well, I think it's, an, I think it's very woman, interesting. So. <laughs> I think it's really interesting because some people consider that language a really big thing. Like, you said what word? And I, I don't know why it just doesn't matter to me. I guess part of me does wish that I, I did live a life where someone using quote unquote foul language is the most dramatic thing that has ever happened. <laughs> you know what? That's a really good point to make. Like if oh shit will like ruin your world, then honestly, bless you and <laughs> I'm so glad. Go have more experiences. <laughs> or don't. I mean, you, you, you be in that bubble of safety and you never come out. The world is scary and sharp and full of curse words because I'm putting them out there. That's how I know. <laughs> so I know we have some questions to go through from yesterday, but I actually want to get Miss Painted Lady here to share a little bit of her self-directed story. Are we still live? Yeah, what? we're still live. We're all live yeah. the whole time. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we just have, I mean, while we're live, we also have to deal with tech issues. And we're just you know, learning I never, this process. I never, like, I've only used the live setting on Miss Painted Lady's Instagram, like, twice. It, like, makes me so nervous. Right. And I don't even have to be filming me. I'm just like, oh, oh. <laughs> so that's what do I do the way with my hands? Was. <laughs> yeah, like, where, what do I do? So when I started, any kind of video work was in the spring of 2017, and I would, like, sweat. Yeah. And uh, that mister over there was really patient with me and helped me get going, and now it's not a problem. Just, just do it. Well. So, so that's, that's exactly kind of what we were talking about at the table. From a tactical perspective, your marketing would be would benefit from you being able to do that, but you just can't because you have limiting beliefs and decisions you made on certain things. I, I mean, I'm... And like, it's okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you notice um, on stage and stuff, I have this, uh, Michelle, after the, the program with my partner, she was like, I like your like default nervous voice. Is like hello, like very deep, <laughs> deep. Were you nervous? Everybody. Yeah. Really? Uh -huh. See, that's my point. I can... Um, do you know I can be on a stage? Half the crowd was your friends. Friend. Do what? Half the crowd was your friends. She was still nervous. They were they were heckling Dude, her. Dude, your bit. answer though at the end with my friend, I was like, oh, <laughs> she needed to hear that, and I was like, like literally on the car at home. I talked about we talked about the whole time. We were like fired up. That was that was some good shit. This actually kind of ties into the conversation we started on Tuesday. I want to say. And what happened was, what uh, happened was, yeah. she <laughs> said, "What can I say or do to be taken serious or something?" She or said, said, "Alex, how does it feel? Which you're my best friend. Why are you asking a question publicly in front of all these people?" I was like, "Save your question for the end. You can ask me later in the car." Um, but she asked me, uh, "How do people take you seriously since you're so beautiful, and how does that impact your business?" And she was being a smart. Yeah. She was being sarcastic. Yeah. Um, I mean, she was being serious, but she, was, she didn't really care. She's not an entrepreneur. Yeah. And then you said. But she also said something about going to a meeting yeah. and that the men don't take her serious. Yeah. Later. She works with all women. Yeah, there's one man there. Yeah, the rest are male positions that she barely talks to. Wow. So what was your response? Well, so I answered, and then somebody else asked a question, and then Abe went to answer his question. And he, I mean, it was like, Good. I was like, ooh, ooh. And then he's like, and back to you, what I have to say to that. And then he like, my drops. Was and this was that. I was like, oh, so man. Yeah, he was on one. Spirit, Spirit was running through him that day. What did you do, we'll Chris? Just stream Twitch. <laughs> Same to you. I love when you watch it. It's awesome. I just said. Please, you don't want to play it. I do not. I am the most humble person. I didn't feel around. like. Uh, would, I like would you like me to screenshot our messages this morning? <laughs> okay, because I'm glad to hear this from me because I didn't get any of that. I'm really good reading character. I didn't well, read so any of that. Facebook is not copywriting, so we're just streaming on Twitch right we now. Can do. We can even like kill it all and start over. Kill it all and start over. Just like yeah, let's I mean, do that. Get the I mean, you out of there. You don't need to start over <laughs> the conversation. I right, need right, to add right, more. Right. Yeah, okay. Let's do that. Okay, good. Cool. So, all right, we'll be back in a second. Don't leave, everybody at home. Don't leave. <laughs> we'll be back in like this is part 2.1 about the end <laughs> in like 30 seconds part 2.1.0 yeah yes because you're gonna wait, have to yeah. do wait. oh yeah i mean yeah just throw oh. it down and, and i'm gonna delete that post how come your all screens are curved because it's awesome now. it's just cool i mean it, i'm looking at it it's really neat i love it i know nothing about tech 
Tech and taxes, I outsource for those tech things. And tech and taxes. Tech and taxes. That's the name of a new like business that know. caters to but women. Yeah, tech and taxes. there you go. But the taxes, no. Taxes, uh, yeah, that's, that's an old kit. So, so <laughs> this one is like really tech yeah. advanced, by the way. She could do websites and coding, like, oh, but no. like real, like the new kid tech, like what? No, so no I have She's no like, how does Instagram? Hey, Instagram won't take a story, tell me. I'm like, click, click. Oh, I'm sorry. That's me, I can't do it. Um, have you heard of Girls Who Code? Yes. yes. Yeah, isn't that freaking cool? It's awesome. My daughter likes it. She codes and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't get it. Cool. I just no, I love it. I feel like I have you one of those random shit. Combines my analytical side and my creative side. Yeah. yeah. That's what I love about it. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. But I don't do it anymore. When I get to, I have fun. Okay, but. now Facebook Live. Oh, and this is a private video too, by the way. Yes. Yeah. No, it's now public and it is live, and I do see us all here. Yay! We exist again. Yay! Yeah, and I think Twitch is taking a little bit because for some reason it's not popular now. So <laughs> it's, it's all right. We have the. Uh, okay. We're recording and everything, so we can post it later. We will right. have. My option to do a live party is gone. Oh. Live is gone. Right Did he not make it well, public? We'll refresh yet? it. Jacob yeah. Harper's here. Harper's here. We got Janica Morton here, which of course, because she's right there. We have uh, Miss Alex Dixon here, which is also known as Miss Painted Lady, world famous, uh, snagged her at the airport on her way to Milan for the Fashion Week. What? No. You should totally be doing that, though. I don't know. I don't like runway. I've done it. It's, it's extremely um, daunting. Really? Yeah. You're like, everybody's sweating, the models are sweating, everybody's running around, it's Everyone chaos. Needs. And also you're Because they're hungry. <laughs> but it's not, it's creative in the sense of like. Doped up on caffeine in Italy. Well, and other things. But like, <laughs> but it's, it, it, it requires creativity in the sense that you're having to recreate the same thing over and over, but it's like an assembly line. You're creating the same yeah. thing over and over. That is what's and I don't like stamping out looks. That's, I like creating a custom experience start to finish every time. Um, that's where my creativity like fuses. I prefer it that way. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So uh, tell us you about your journey because this is actually what self-directed learning is. Okay. So what I- What journey? Like your career, your, your business journey, I'm sorry. Specifically, oh. how, do you, how did you go from no makeup skills to now 12 years 13, you know, 12 years, right? 12 year business? 12 years. A 12 year business that is right now really hyper focused on uh, getting women prepared for their weddings. Um, so I've always been in the beauty industry. I got signed to an agency when I was 12. Um, and we were speaking earlier about how flaky majority of beauty professionals can be. Um, and so a lot of them would flake out on photo shoots and runway shows and you know, things like that. So I would end up um, having to do my own and um, the agency had kind of picked up on my abilities to do makeup or whatever and I started off slowly that way. I would sometimes So this is like a teenager? Yes. Like how young? Uh, 15. 15? Yeah. So I wow. um, started doing like makeup education and then would do makeup on location for runway and shoots. Um, and this is like large um, corporate like Back then it was Bacon's, JCPenney's or whatever, mm -hmm. Dillard's, like those were our clients. Um, Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, um, big clients like that. And so I was doing like these jobs from a really young age, um, learning how to like greet someone, look them in the eye, shake their hand firmly and things like that. Uh, it's funny, the, it's funny you bring those up because I think those are so critical. Oh, if I shake your hand, I'm so I like I'm all for equality stuff, but especially if you're a man, sorry, but like if you have a limp handshake, I'm just done. Like, are they like trying to be like careful slammy. so they don't hurt yeah, your hand? Yeah, hurt my female hand, please. I'm not strong enough to take it, but yeah, if it's limp or sweaty and clammy, I can't. But um, yeah, so those those are really important, I think, in business, being confident, presenting yourself. Um, and then, so I stayed with the agency for several years and uh, was born and raised in a really small town, so I relocated to the DFW area to get more experience. Um, started a degree in cosmetology, worked my way through cosmetology um, full-time while employed at MAC Cosmetics, um, and just kind of started there, started gaining my experience. Um, my favorite part was watching all of the artists and just studying their every move 
and I just kind of took all of their um, strong points and things that I liked and I pulled from it just like a recipe and I just like made up my own style and it started catching attention of a lot of Pakistani and Indian women um, back then I wasn't like very worldly so I didn't understand who I was serving and working on um, but uh, you know I would start doing freelance jobs for uh, brides eventually like going to their house and getting them ready um, and the very first one that really caught wind of my stuff and it kind of took off from there um, was about 12 years ago um, a bride's sister found me on MySpace social media. Wow. And, MySpace. Um, I haven't oh heard that God. for That's ever. How old are you? I'm 33. I'll be 30. Okay, yeah, I'll be 34 this year. Um, That's what I was asking. <laughs> Thank you. The amount of work and terrifying security hoops you have to jump through to reset your friggin' MySpace yes. password, like you might as well oh just forget it. I know. I had I so much. On there, though, that, like, well, those are all my engagement pictures, so I like had to like. I mean, my God. Uh, is the stuff still there? Yeah, it was. I mean, this yeah. was a couple of years Didn't ago. Did Justin Timberlake buy it or something? Yeah, it's a well, part of it. Yeah, because they wanted to turn it for music, like that back to where it started. Investment. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, but yeah, she found me on MySpace, and which I don't know, like I was so ratchet and rugged, like for real. <laughs> I would have never, so funny. like middle finger to the camera, like tongue mm -hmm. out and pictures, like I would have never hired me, but they they did, and um and back then I only catered to makeup for brides because I didn't know how to do specialty hair, and um and they hired me. She had like eight trials before me tried me you know tried my makeup and loved it and then they booked me and I kind of um, started getting referrals from there I continued being employed with Mac for about six months past that point and then I had a client who was like I was like I'm miserable here I, I you know they're limiting my creativity and telling me to drive sales and just all this these things were happening and she was like you can do this like I tried to develop a business model um, I went to a small business like um, meeting with some dude in Fort Worth like it was a free workshop or free Gary meeting. Johnson what? Was he an older guy it was an older guy but it's like an actual service that the city offers for small business entrepreneurs that they'll sit down with you and go over your business plans oh okay that's different okay cool. yeah yeah so it was really cool it was a cool resource for me then because I was a wee baby like at age 20 and I didn't know what I was doing <laughs> wee baby. Um, so it, it just helped me kind of get a start um, and uh, I just was like, screw it. And I quit I quit my job, my hourly, my benefits, my stock, everything. I just quit it. And um, my daughter was only like one or two at the time. And um, so I just did it. It wasn't probably the most well thought out situation, but it kind of put me in a sink or swim type yeah. mode. And um, yeah, I just kind of started from there, built the website. Um, that was good. And ba the way I started was I I offered my services for pretty dirt cheap and kept building my experience. I started offering hair, jewelry, veil setting, all that head to toe for super dirt cheap and just kept building a portfolio until eventually. So who be like, taught you this stuff? Me. So that's the whole like. Me. Yeah. So how? I, well, I got fortunate to where when I was doing makeup for these brides, I would go on location and there was an artist there. Um, Mo Bowers and Maite Models, they were sisters, two different businesses, but sisters, and they were both very talented with hair and jewelry and veil setting. It's called a dubutta if I say it on accident. And anyway, so I would just watch. And they were, they were kind enough to share their knowledge with me if I asked questions, or I'd say, hey, can I watch? And they would let me. That's and you, you've got to be a certain type as an artist to be able to watch someone and pick it up instantly from, from observing. Um, and I just did. And they were nice enough to let me. Well, so. I mean, in that, there comes, like, an inherent skill of, like, you can see what some, like, when you're cooking, like, mm -hmm. they don't have to break down all the steps. You can watch them and do that where someone yeah. else couldn't because you've got that. Or even just having, like, an outline or a baseline mm -hmm. to go off of, like, for me, directly related cool. to cooking, I don't follow recipes, but I'll look them up on Pinterest and they'll yeah. be like, oh, and I'm like, oh, you don't know how don't garlic measure. works. Yeah, <laughs> you don't know how garlic works. I don't measure or anything, but I just take the base and keep it. Oh my God, it makes Miles so mad. He calls it me going off box. Because <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's very comfortable cooking things like from a very detailed that recipe so or like a <laughs> recipe on the box. Yeah. And so, and he's like, I made it. It does not taste like when you make it. And I'm like, 
oh yeah, well I did this, this, and this. Like, Stop going off box! You know what sucks about off box is you can't replicate off box. No, but that's part of the fun. No, it's not. When you're like, oh my god, this is so good, Emily, make it again. You're like, I have no clue that's what I did. That's the problem. You know what? I just let Jesus take the wheel. Right. Right. No. <laughs> Jesus. I got my murder podcast in, you know, a little something this, a little something that. It's great. Oh my god. That's... Only okay. sounds like I'm She's kidding. So funny. That's great. Uh, I'm real basic that way. <laughs> She's so funny. Oh my god. She either says stuff like that or she doesn't talk. So just that's so great. you know, like yeah. that's the binary relationship we have here with Emily. You know, when people that means people hang on my every word because there's like what? her mouth is opening. Yeah. Yeah. What's about to happen? <laughs> Anyways. So you were doing, I think it's a really interesting story about how you went from the model to the, what, what you learned working with models. I believe you said there was a location that had, um, this gentleman was running, I don't know what it was, doing photos for, for magazines or something. Oh, and then you really yeah. saw what was going on there and then you were able to apply it in a totally different place. Yeah, and then you know what? I just had a thought pop up. Let me just like reverse about school. I hated school. Just FYI, like that's I hated school. Just in relation to life, like sure. I hated the sh I hated school. When you I mean school, like, what does that mean to you? All and, everything, college, did da what? I didn't do college. Okay, so you're talking about grades. I didn't uh, even K finish high school. Okay. I didn't even finish high school. Um, I yeah, K through twelve. I just didn't like it. I went to um, seven different schools from oh. K through twelve. I switched it up a lot, and um. I mean, socially it was fine in, in so many ways, but yeah, I mean, I did it just to get it done because I'm a, I was a pleaser and like, I, I like checklists and I like performing, but despite that, the actual like act of being there every day from this time to this time, that structure just didn't suit me. So whenever I picked up modeling and got signed, I was doing jobs during the day, so I would like ch get checked out of school or check myself out of school and go on these <laughs> modeling jobs, making like 130 an hour, and would yeah. do that like three, four days a week. I was like, this is dope, I can get used to this. <laughs> so then enter in like now, having a life where I get to set my own pace and my schedule. I mean, sometimes it's chaotic, but then there's sometimes that like, I, it allows me a lot of freedom and opportunity to be there for my daughter, or just to catch up on home life, and or you know, contracts and things like that, emails. It's fantastic. So, um, yeah. What did you ask me? <laughs> oh, you were, Tim. Tim Bennett. Yes. Yeah, um, so this is a really interesting story of how how you seized the opportunity, and then was able to then apply what you learned there to a whole different, right? Yeah. So, back at this time as a wee baby artist, I honestly was just hungry to get work. <laughs> oh, I, oh, what? <laughs> we have a we have a on Twitch. We have a person whose name is Ace Platinum, and he has. Give us new names, <laughs> new personas, new jobs. So it's really funny that he kind of really got yours kind of close. He yeah. said, who's the lady sitting in Steven's spot? I'm guessing her name is Brenda. She's 23 and works as a nail paint artist. So kind of Asian, close. that's like so stereotypical. <laughs> so that's kind of close. Well, I know I look 23, so I'll take that. So, so somebody Definitely. said no about 28. So that's another, there's a whole debate. I'll on. also take that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. That's all. You're Asian, what, what is? Korean and white. I'm Korean and white. Which which side's Korean? My dad. Do you speak any Korean? I, I have so. two girls at my house that will go crazy yes. if they knew. Yeah. Because K-pop. One of them is Korean, actually. So it's almost like our adopted daughter. She's 15, <gasps> and she is from South Korea. She's a foreign exchange student that came here in August, and she'll stay now through high school. So That's she'll be amazing. with us for oh three gosh. more years. Kudos yeah. Kudos to you, man. I What's don't up? like. Kudos to you. I don't like anyone else's children. So I don't, I don't barely tolerate my own. So like I know, I, I know, I, I totally understand. I've been a student for this several years. Well, Tangie's constantly talking about adopting, and I'm like, talk about really somebody else's child. And so that's a whole conversation, which we're not going to have here because I've got a bunch of hate mail. Holy anyway, yeah, so. Uh, Tangie and I can adopt kids. So cool. Oh, cool. You'll be like sister wives. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. He'll just provide, and you'll be provided. <laughs> Nurturing. And then and then there's Noor, which is all about K-pop, and all the way down to all the boys. Like even the one-year-old puts on BTS, so you can dance on YouTube. Yeah. So the Korean thing is really big it. in our house. I, don't, I mean, I'll go to a Korean restaurant. There's one um, in Carrollton that's really awesome, and it's like really crunk. And my kid can go too. Oh uh, yeah. It's like the one by the Korean like barbecue. Oh, there's a there's like 50 Korean restaurants. Yeah. There. But this yeah, one in particular is awesome. The one by H Mart. 
Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Next to H Mart, but not the nice one. It's like more of a bar setting. Mm-hmm. We took my friend for a birthday, and they were like pouring liquor bottles. That's in. I'm like, so that is against TABC, but is it was fun. Real strong. So you said <laughs> dad is Korean, mother is. Mother is white. Oh, white girl. Say okay. White. Yeah, because we're from the country. Really. <laughs> and we like it that way. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm all right. Good raised deal. in a really small town, about 20 minutes outside of Louisville, Kentucky. Oh wow! Yeah, you hear your accent every once in a while. There's a little bit. It's when so I'm tired, I, love it. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. I didn't like, get on go. camera today because he just he does that this on me at the last second. Um, Literally, they recorded my job sucks. interview. It was a blast. Ooh, not live. No. Oh. Only no, we, we were doing that at the time, but we were geared us at the time. We had our desk in a totally different configuration. Yeah. And then Emily oh. shows up, and a couple of weeks later, we totally tear down and build this crazy, weird, like, Nazi Trying symbol. Like, it's like, it's almost like a swastika here. Well, like, okay, so, like, speaking on job interviews and, like, related to, like, finding yourself, self-directed learning, gaining yeah. your confidence and stuff, when I worked at Mac, you know, like, whenever you're in a world, you see the top, and you just, like, want to climb the scale yeah. to the top, even though that's not necessarily your journey? It's well, of course, I want to, that's motion. how it goes, right. So I was working at Mac, and I thought that managing people was something I wanted to do. So I applied for the third key manager position and interviewed for it. And then I was like 20, 21, like 21 years old. My daughter was like just a wee baby. And she was like, so tell me like why you'd be good at this job. I'm like, well, I need this job because I need more money. <laughs> and like I was the worst. Okay, so you gave actual order. honest answers, <laughs> not some sort of bullshit. But like, wow, I really feel money. Why do you want this job? Um, I really like to eat food. <laughs> and then it was the opposite. Emily's like, I've stalked your Facebook page and I really adore you guys and I think I believe in your mission and she value. She was very confused by your yes. reference. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like he really, really paraphrases what I say to yeah. make it less... Really, really paraphrases. <laughs> <laughs> those it are not my face. words. I didn't I say delusional. Know. I said oh, strongly. Not this specific time. Alex, here's though. the best thing possible that I'm quite skilled at is in a an environment in which said person would kind of get like, oh my God, I can't really rebuttal him or say something back at that level. Mm-hmm. Then I drop crazy Jonathan. shit on him. That's right. dope. Right, right, right. Yeah. I respect that. So, respect. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's, it's really, it's really horrible. I don't have to be around. Because then they time. can't, they kind of, they yeah. kind of catch up, and they don't know what to say, and <laughs> and then they're like, they want to reply back really crazy, but then they're here in front of a new person. Yeah. And, oh no, well, like she's fine. It's the camera. I know what it is. It's the camera for you here, but yes, I know. And That's so, your safety net. So yeah. The yeah. disturbing thing is when I get to moments where I'm like, oh shit, he's gonna say X Y Z next, and oh, what's gonna happen? And he does, and I'm like, oh, what's wrong with my brain that I know what he's gonna say next, and it's so jacked up. It's not jacked up. It's a skill. Work work wife work husband relationship, though. You know, at least you have that synchronicity, whether you enjoy it or not. You know. I don't want to admit that I'm that crazy. What (laughs) to expect and unexpect it from this crazy dude? What's up? You know. I will say I'm very proud of myself because when I watched Deadpool, I was like, I know what he's gonna say. Oh my god, what's up? He does. I'm like that with Game of Thrones right now. I haven't uh, seen Game of Thrones. I might need to one day. One day I'm gonna sit there. I, yeah, no spoilers, but I was not quite as upset as I think a lot of people were about how things went. I was like, yeah. Mm. About how things went what? The last episode? Mm-hmm. It's just well, we have a sound bar, so it's like like rattle the walls movie theater yeah. style. It's yeah. No, I mean. Pretty intense. It's pretty legit. I think it was the right direction for that story arc to go. I think so too. Wow, Especially if you read the books, because you know. I didn't said, read the books. Said story I arc here. Books. Did you read the books? Yes. What a nerd. My daughter's a. Speaking of self directed nerds, nerd. go ahead. Tell us about how you decided to read <laughs> War and Peace and then. Game War of and Peace with Dragons. <laughs> it's really like Game of Thrones. Is. She's, like the fi- she's like one of five people that have actually read Game of That's Thrones. Not That's not true. That's no, oh my God. I'm sure there's like book club discussions and well, there's an actual any, bar that no my cool friend people. was telling me about in Dallas that's like Game of Thrones. Themed. Well, I know they were have they had like a couple of like events where like Hodor came in and DJed and stuff, and I wasn't able to get tickets to. But this was like a year or so ago. Yeah, it was like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and we had a lit time. We missed we have a question. Question. <laughs> How do you feel about octopuses? Octopuses, yeah, not octopi, by the way. In the in just the a general, way, just a general question. In asked. general, in the water, a little creepy, and. Um, grilled Delicious. on a plate. <laughs> Delicious. Why? I'm not gonna go bleep the last part out. Why? Warren, she would love you. I promise. So one of our one of our guests here, or one of our 
uh, audience members here on Facebook. His name is Warren Carlisle uh, the fourth, and he is the founder of Octonation, which is the world's largest octopus fan club. So well, I love them. So I love them so much. I eat them. Like one hundred and ninety thousand followers. Oh, what? Oh, she's like, what did you say? <laughs> so I think you just maybe insulted like 190,000 no, followers. No, but I don't, eat, I don't eat meat, though. I remember what it was like to eat meat. So they're weird and amazing in the water. Nothing has changed. It's still delicious. So. <laughs> Sorry. No, he's not against Your memory serves you right. <laughs> remember bacon? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Still great. Anyways. They're still yummy. They're cute. Oh, my God. They're horrible. He said, so LOL, smart. always happens. He perfectly, he perfectly set us up for that, yeah, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well played, Warren. Oh, my God. Anyways, so going back to, I don't even know how we digress. So, Jessica, yeah, I was just was saying how bad I was at interviewing. And I even remember interviewing for a makeup artist instructor position at Paul Mitchell or Tony and Guy or something like that. And literally, I typed up this amazing like outline of like how I would structure just one lesson or whatever, or a week long lesson. And whenever they told me to like go through it and stuff, instead of like teaching it or being excited and talking about it, I literally was like, and then and then did it, and I just read it out loud. And that had to have been the most miserable experience for them on the other end of the table, sitting there like, please be done with this interview and get out of here. It's like when you read a deposition, and you're like. Oh. Right, but like, but that was not meant for Read me. Like those, those, those sort of like nine, shit. You don't understand. <laughs> those sort of like <laughs> nine to five, like managerial, like paperwork type positions, like would not have been a fit for me. So, anyway, enter in. Let's see. I guess what was your question before? You talked about octopus, and it just got me confused. <laughs> this is how it goes here. I love it. It's, it's perfect for me. It's perfect for me. It's perfect. So we have this like overarching kind of concept that we may talk about, and right. then we just go crazy. <laughs> no, it's great. It's perfect. Um, I thought okay, it's kind of so, taboo. So, like we're deliberately trying to not accidentally talk about it. That would be a whole game too. We could try to do. I, so, I think that's what we're doing. I missed something. Okay, oh, just right. whatever our topic we're oh, supposed to be talking about, and they're like, "Oh, let's end." <laughs> <laughs> like, so here's the thing: is I know your backstory because I was I shared a stage with you when we did the little spiel at uh, Sue Ellen's in Dallas. It was mm -hmm. really awesome. Our, yeah, our I've had mutual a lot buddy. Of there. Uh, huh? I have a lot of good memories in that place. Ah, cool. Yeah. So our mutual it's buddy named Thomas. It's a bar. It's a bar, right? Bar club. Mm -hmm. Okay in uptown okay. and so i i remember you saying specifically how you worked in this this i was just photo shoot yes we were doing photo shoots okay. and, and did but you got to work with because there were people flaking out and so they would ask you hey can you come fix her makeup hey can you fix her hair whatever mm -hmm. and before you knew it you started learning all these skills that turn around yeah. when there's this makeup i think there was a, also a catastrophe in the wedding world and you're like okay sure i'll try mm, okay, and then you yeah, brought yeah. all those skills this is around the same so time. i'm going to tell her story just you ah! can, you can just go and take a break <laughs> now i got this shit down now. i love it go i love hearing him talk um so oh, you hear that <laughs> here i'm not even use your camera did you did y'all hear that <laughs> it's totally recorded we could play back all day long yeah i love day. hearing I'm going to need to work from home for <laughs> the <laughs> next <laughs> ever. Warren here for his ego. Warren runs a slowly yeah. backs out of Octopus Massacre Convention. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, my God. Okay. Anyway, so please. Um, okay. Tell the story I just told. So, <laughs> so um, I was about 21, and I... Uh, the way that I started building a portfolio, my ref reference source instead of Instagram or Facebook was actually a site called Model Mayhem. Um, it was for it was like a, a meetup for photo, uh, photo, video models, makeup artists, hairstyles, all that. And so I had a profile on there, and it was just basic photos of myself. Um, and um, I eventually ended up getting linked up with a photographer named Tim Bennett. And um, when I came to his location, it was like an industrial warehouse, and I was like, "Am I gonna get killed?" But then I went inside and it was incredible. He had this, like, it was like a 4,000 square foot warehouse, which eventually he ended up getting more property next door. So it ended up being an 8,000 square foot warehouse. Um, and he, after years of doing these projects with him, got a manager. He got a dude to build props on set um, and just, like, did the most extraordinary um, sets. Like, we're talking, like, ad campaign style, like, things. He um, had a custom-built water tank inside, 
and the hose like ran up to the ceiling and it was like a waterfall thing Ooh. so he would put different like hair lights in the back yeah. with the gel color on top so it would like illuminate the water purple Ooh. or green and um it was just the experience of having all the lights off and then like whenever the bulbs trigger and you hear that sound and like and then the model's just like ooh 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 serving it and there's like water pouring and I'm like yes I was like living for the experience and just the music and the bass and it just was like I really had found a home in that um, that environment and so we were constantly creating and pushing out content and what A was hitting on was that like where my um, my experience built in perfecting what it is that I do was because he had like all the gadgets, all the tech, um, and he had a large monitor. So every time it fired off a new shot, boom, it would pop up on the monitor, boom. So I'm like, I'm looking at the model whenever I want to get lost in the moment, but whenever I'm focused on, okay, what's this look like? Is this symmetrical? Okay, it's too dark on this side. I would look at the monitor. I'd say, hold on a second, Tim. I'd go on set, get my feet wet or whatever, and like crank out, you know, whatever needed to happen, and then that was it. So I learned how things shot on high definition. He would even sometimes for these projects bring in like video. Whenever high def transition happened and newscasters were flooding me like what do I do I'm terrified um, I had to learn a whole new way of doing makeup on set because it reads four times the naked eye so it is like bare. You see every it's day. like literally when I get grooms ready a lot of times if they like I had to get rid of dudes ear hair I mean I work sanitarily so like don't worry my tweezers are clean but like <laughs> yeah like nose hair I've had to trim I mean it's it picks up everything um, so yeah, um, I even do it for like the Texas Rangers and stuff for their commercial shoots and interviews and stuff because um, it's just brutal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's how I learned. That's how I learned to perfect um, that situation. Did you go to any school I, or advanced no, work that you do or are you just constantly like, learning? Just learning. I got licensed in cosmetology um, um, from Ogle, but honestly, like I would never get a haircut from an instructor there. In fact, I did several times and I started off with hair down here and ended up with hair mm -hmm. shaved in the back here. So, so. it started off like this and then I get like this. So yeah, no, I know, ex I did an extension. I was a model for extensions one time. I ended up ripping them out in the middle of the night. Like it was, it was mm. yeah. I wouldn't say that my education was superior. I basically learned how to do, you know, proper sanitation policies and procedures and pass the state board exam. Um, so it was corrected. just self-taught. It was it was self-taught, and and honestly, just like, uh, just being able to um, watch the mentors and the seasoned artists at my counter. I work with a drag queen um, who's still very well known in the Dallas Ooh. area. Chan Chanella Masters, bitch. Uh, Look her up, girl. She's, well, I think they know like, like one of her dra her drag daughters or something. I think. Yeah, I'm uh -huh. sure you do. She, they're all they're all something La Masters. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean. Or O'Hara. Fatal. Yes, she's friends with O'Hara. Mm -hmm. um, but like, yeah, I mean, it's just, I just got to, and that's all Pakistani and Indian makeup is, and that's what a lot of people in this, you know, YouTube and social media generation, mm -hmm. they're using 17 concealers on their face, which even at that point is excessive, even for a bridal I can't even stage. Like, I give up. Totally that's, I had someone message me yesterday on the Miss Pain Lady Instagram asking about a bronzer. I'm like, that's a really, or, or a con contour, what to contour with. I'm like, that's a really loaded question. It depends on your skin type, your features. Your face, your, contour your face. It depends. Whole thing. It depends. So I'm thing. like, so I'm going to keep it basic for you because it depends on your skill set too. Yeah. So I'm like, let me keep it basic for you. I'm like, I recommended a brush to get from this store called Miss A. Um, it's super cheap. It's a dollar for the brush. And I use it on myself and I have a ton of them in my brush belt because they're incredible. Um, and it really works well. I, I recommended that and a bronzer and was like, I, like a powder. And just do that, like. I just really like I have a five, a real gentle five o'clock shadow coming in when I try to contour. So I'm just like, that's <laughs> that's not for me. <laughs> so I you cannot I contour a great. <laughs> because because it's too much, and that's the thing is like people are seeing this and they want this they want this instant gratification. No, it takes a long time, a lot of practice. It's, a, the it's art. That matters. <laughs> it is it is art, but also like you gotta imagine these people are doing it on themselves. How many thousands of times have they done their makeup on themselves? From the Plus jump? you're trying to do it in your bathroom with shit lighting. Yeah. Yeah, and but, but even if you have good lighting, it's like, so, but have you ever seen any of these experienced people who are making $100,000 a post to promote this makeup? Have you ever seen them do makeup on anyone else? And have we ever seen how it wears throughout the day? 
mm-hmm. through mm-hmm. dancing and being on a stage light and like these dramatic conditions and be doing a photo shoot out in the rain with your groom. Like that's these are the things that like people don't understand that when they're hiring this that's the the front end is the easiest part of the job is making people pretty and putting the look together. That's the easiest part. But they see that and they think that, well, look at her Instagram photos. First of all, are they filtered and edited? Tell me that, okay? Right. Because mine are raw um, and untouched and from my camera phone. But um, also, secondly, like, what did her makeup look like at 4 o'clock in the morning whenever they do, like, the farewell and go to the groom's house to be welcomed and all that? Because I've seen my bride's photo galleries whenever they send me the link, and it, they're like, dude, this, was, this picture was taken at 4 a.m. I'm like, shut up. Like, I am really good at my job. <laughs> I am. Like, I'm really good at my job. But That's how so does this funny. hold up? How does it read on camera? Um, and like, are you customizing the look to your client? And I think you're doing people an injustice whenever you're slathering 17 concealers on the face because you're trying to sell them and get them to click your link. Yeah, and totally. you're not showing me what it looks like at the end of the day. Well, and the other thing, my, one of my sons, the, the one that's in middle school, he said, Mom, what do these girls look like? Like, for he real. Was, he was like, half of them, they showed up for something and they didn't have their makeup on. They were, I don't know, he's like, I didn't recognize some of them. Like, that's disgusting. And my thing is that every now and again, I'll get a bride who's like, I want to look completely unrecognizable. And, but for me, like, even with all the drama, like, even with all the drama, I'm still, like, have you seen makeup artists, like, that are sensationalized? And they, they're fantastic. They do stellar work, but every model and every bride looks exactly yeah. like them. Yeah. They look the same. Yeah. I believe in finding exactly who you are as a person, what's your personality type. If, if you come into my studio for a trial and you're showing me multiple pictures, if they're scattered and they don't, they're completely all over the place for just like one look concept, I'll explain how they're so different and contrasting. And that will give me an idea of like, okay, you don't know what it is that you like. Let's pick this apart. I'll ask investigative questions. We'll get down to it. But then um, if they come in and their ideas are very fluid, and I'll, I'll, I can know, like, but either way, you don't have to know what your personality type is or what you like, because most of my brides are surgeons or whatever, and they have masks on, they don't wear makeup. So um, I'll figure out how to, how to pull that out and bring it together. But um, I believe in like, I believe in letting your natural beauty shine through. I don't want people to be like, damn, that makeup girl though. Like, I see beautiful makeup. Okay. On 12 year olds. So, so a comment from Warren. So Warren also does really high end consulting in Instagram. And building your community, actually, not just Instagram, but just building community. Uh-huh. Specialty there in Instagram. Cool. So he says, that's too, de- that's too in-depth for a vanity surface level industry, which would be a good way to differentiate you in the marketplace. Call it out and make these people ask those questions to makeup artists. I had to ask what MUA was, and he, like, he scolded me. Ha! Okay, so. so say that again. He said, what's too in-depth? Well, like the way they're doing it, you should call it out. And, and highlight oh, this. Oh, you know what's cool about this? Um, He's saying they're, like, they're so just trying to do that, and you're like, there's so much depth to what do we're you, doing. Do you know the reason that I have ended up where I am is because I hate conformity? I absolutely hate so doing you're anything rebel. like, yes, and I always have been. I hate doing anything <laughs> like anyone else. I always have, like, I've loved the band Tegan and Sarah for years now. It was like my coming out story and they really helped get me through some hard times. But then as soon as they got popular and like really by the house, like good for them, but yeah. like, but it just, it went from this folk acoustic, like two voices harmonizing to like this whole indie electro pop thing that I couldn't relate to. And then there's like screaming kids at their concerts and then they play an old school song and I'm the only one I'm like, Woo! the con like and everyone's like who's this old lady like what does she want with this so like you know I'm just I'm a rebel I don't like doing things that anybody else does and what's cool is Bobby Brown actually was pushed out of her own company she was bought out of her own company and um, it ended up being the best thing for her because she didn't like the direction they were trying to take her they were trying to do highlight and contour sticks and this and this and this and she's all about bringing the inner beauty of that woman and her features and, and enhancing them she wants to enhance their beauty not cover their face and I, I think it plays into, you know, who you are as a person, right? Like, I, being with my partner now, she's really helped me to understand and see that, like, that aesthetically, I've been putting my aesthetic for for so long, especially in the beauty industry, that, like, you know, there's different areas and aspects of yourself to embrace. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel like so many young girls are starting to hide behind 
wanting to cover who they are by leading with their face. And it's and that that's to what me. they're taught. I mean, mm -hmm. Scarlett talks about it all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I have to look like this, and I don't look like that. And your poor son, boys like natural and your poor son's so confused why he didn't recognize Sally the yeah. next day when he she came with no face on. He hates all their makeup. All oh, of my oh, boys do. My, da my daughter came home from a three week break with my mom. So I picked her. What? Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I'm going to add to the conversation because I'm trying to feed to you tell me, tell what's me. happening here. So Warren says, oh my God, me too. You know who has never changed? Brandy Carlisle. And he's, oh, yes, correct, yes. And he says, core value, your second C. So he has seven Cs. I thought we were talking about makeup for a second. Sorry, Warren. <laughs> I was like, Brandy Carlisle, the makeup artist? I don't know who that is. Yeah, so, yeah, she's great. Second C. So he has seven Cs for building a community, and one of them is core values, and so you were just bringing up some of your core values. So what's up, Ken? Uh, Ken does an awesome live show, uh, and he is based in Ohio. So he's my buddy. I met him I'm going to be in Ohio next weekend. Where in? What city? I think Cold he's there. in Cleveland, right outside of Cleveland. Yeah, he's I'm really literally awesome. gonna go straight to the Airbnb and then go to the Broad at three o'clock yes. this morning. Or I'm sorry, uh, building a fanatical community. I'm sorry, I, I, I misrepresented what Warren does. He's Sorry. about building fanatical Ooh. communities. Wow, okay. So pretty cool, cool. stuff. Yeah. So, I'm sorry I interrupted you. I just want to like constantly no, 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 the update sure. what's happening. Let me ask you, Emily, what questions, what questions can we specifically answer from That's, yesterday? I was gonna say, when I um, pulled the conversation, the main really useful question I think would tie to a lot of what we're talking about is when we're saying self-directed learning, are we talking about like a course you take, like online or in class, or mm. something you decide you want to learn and then just pick up that skill, like a hobby yeah. or? Go for it, Janica. So self-directed learning is Both. everything. It's all of the above. It's what do you want to do and how do you want to learn it? Including going to a nine yeah. to five class if you want go to. Go sign up for a class, go get a degree, go be an apprentice, go teach yourself, go you know, that self-direction is you're the one leading yourself yeah. to that method of learning. Yeah, whatever works for you. That's the what journey is what gets you where you're meant to go, yes. right? Like, and you can't, that's the thing. I kept trying to like shortcut all this. And if I lived in a generation now with like indeed.com with multiple, yes. things, that's all I wanted back then was a makeup artist posting with a solid job, with a steady income, and I would have been happy. I would have settled for movies. I would have settled for a makeup counter. I would have settled for anything. Anything yeah. and like and that's you said like if you were to apprentice or whatever like you never know what like where it's going to lead you network yeah network. meeting people exposure yeah part of the self directed path for children is exposing them to lots of different things so that they then know oh that interests me what that feels me. good yeah yes. what feels and like, be like oh you're really good at putting things together so you're an engineer go that path and then they get in their head oh I'm an engineer and then they're like I really am not an engineer I just no, it's very select few people can be engineers. Well, I see that so much with my Pakistani and Indian community. Yes. I mean, I have I've had a full on conversation with yeah. them once. She's a doctor. Her sisters are doctors. Her dad's a doctor. And I'm like, you know, she has her own practice now. And what? I'm like, are you happy? And she's like, what? I mean, <laughs> she's like, I mean, no, I don't really like what I do, but like, you know, I'm good at it. And I'm like, well, what would you really want to do if you could? She's like, I would love to do like website development, yeah. oh. branding. And I'm like, that's your creative side coming out. Like, right. you know, yeah. how creative can you be as a dentist? I mean, sorry. Like, you, you, don't want, you, you, don't want, you don't want too much creativity You, you in probably dentistry. can, but, well, but you probably can, I'm sure, you know. What another, what, what's your next question? That was, that was the main one. A lot of it was just kind of conversation, so I'll. <laughs> Ace Platinum says, Ohio to the people in Ohio. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's awesome. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So what other questions I think that we, we know get asked a lot, right, is how do you know, how do you know the kid is learning? Or how do you know that, don't you have to force the kid to learn math and reading? Uh, those are some common Ooh, questions. That's my question. No. So what, no. well then you ask the question then. So, yeah, so, you know, my daughter's in public school and she struggles because of the sh structure of it. She just doesn't fit the framework yeah. there. Um, do you feel like math, and science and things like that are core and necessary in order for them to get where they're going, whether it's the creative field or otherwise. So that's a really complex question. So is it necessary for everyone? No. Is it ne is is math and science necessary for an engineer? Well, yeah. To get a degree? Well, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. For a doctor? Yes. Yes. Um, well, for those degrees, it is. I was going to say, I, I mean, disagree. you better know how to measure CCs for my body <laughs> if you have to inject me with something. No, that part, yeah, but no, I think, I do think there is a legitimate need for 
mm -hmm. everyone to have at least a basic concept and understanding of science and medicine and all kinds of things. That, you don't have to be a doctor, but so what, I mean, what about? I'm sorry, we've got measles outbreaks because people have a very loose grasp of science and vaccinations. herd immunity and yeah. vaccinations yeah. and you know science well, and how to determine what science is. I can take a source and read all of that. Yeah, so but that's, we're like one of the biggest developed countries that have outbreaks of that, basically. I'm, I'm gonna go there. Okay, yeah. so no, don't go there. Oh man, it's important. The people, the mainstream people who believe in vaccinations are the educated people and that's what i mean though it's give it's, everyone the opportunity to at least maybe that's the issue is self-directed you can then have the ability to use you can think outside the box and actually study what's not just told to you i was gonna say you're talking about educated people in the sense of what's what's common and what's routinely yeah. done so right. when you look at it yeah. you have okay you have people who are i'm going to say brainwashed but mm -hmm. don't take it the way you want in, in school, no apologies. <laughs> nope. In school, we're brainwashed a certain way. In religions, we're brainwashed a certain yeah. way by a common thread. In cultures, we are cultural. Mm -hmm. It goes across all these different groups. This is the way it is. This is the way we do. It's done in families. This is the way we do it. This is what's accepted. Don't push outside those boundaries. Don't think outside of that because of X, Y, and Z. Right. So then you have people who then think outside the box. They go and research and like, hey, what about this? This doesn't make this, this doesn't line up. And then you start digging deep, you're like, oh, this is all money driven, this is all control driven, this is all this, 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 and this. And then you have this conflict, and then you have, oh, well, they're not educated. Well, bullshit, they're educated, they're just not educated in, or they've gone beyond mm -hmm. that controlled, this is acceptable, this is what causes this, this is what causes this, this is what causes this. Mm -hmm. I see it more as just people aren't because of a more maybe structured educational system people are not actually taught how to do critical thinking exactly. yes I found this website or this article that tells me this thing it must be true despite you know again in well, case of science so you're doing well, actual experiments that have to be like science, documented processes science, yeah. I am a big lover of science yeah. there's no doubt I'm, I am get I love that don't forget, we're the same scientific community thought the world was flat at some point. Right. They also said eggs were bad for you. And so they're but constantly- But if you can't replicate an experiment but to validate uh, your uh, hypothesis, then it's just, you're, you're it's an idea. But it's not fact. But, 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 uh, hold on. There are experiments that are we're not talking about that are not even done correctly. They're just done, I mean, and they've proven that, but so many experiments that are done to support a medicine that's needed was totally false. And it, because yeah. it has all the money, it, it gets pushed yeah. through. And things so that need to be pushed through don't, because you know. So, not so really, what's money. happening is that be, there's a lack of trust in the system. That's actually what we should be speaking about, because what you're referring to in any of these things is that there's a general lack of trust in the system, because that's the same system that said this was okay or that was okay would turn out to be bad. So anytime there's this drug that's been on the market for 20 years and they pull the drug finally, and then there's all the lawsuits related to, wow, we actually figured out this was causing this. Well, some people start realizing like, man, I really can't trust the system because the system is telling me this medicine was so good. It was good for my heart issue or my liver issue, but then ended up giving me, you know, colon cancer or whatever. Like, yeah. to, can I really trust the scientific community all the time? And, and really, what's the difference or, or where's their motivation? Mm -hmm. So you can go on any of these subjects. You can go back and figure out the studies related to sugar. There's actually some really interesting documentaries on the studies related to sugar and how the sugar lobby really jammed, um, I think it was in 1972-ish, and they really start pushing and you know, hammering, uh, I wanna say the FDA at the time, because they were about to say that sugar was, um, like it needed to be regulated. And so they really went into a huge problem and they caused budget issues. And so then all of yeah. a sudden like, hey, sugar's allowed. So we really, that's really, I think, the crux of what's actually happening in the conversation when it comes to global warming, or it comes to vaccines, is generally like, yeah, but you're the same fuckers who told me this, and you're the same fuckers yeah. who told me that. How do I actually know that this is not just because, you know, Glaco Smith, Klein, or whatever, they're just really lobbied you to make sure I'm that- I was gonna say, look where, the, where everybody's invested. Oh, yeah. It'll yeah, so some of it is know. legit, and some of it, yeah. I mean, so right now there's huge cases that are going on in California against the makers of Roundup. Mm -hmm. I have heard of it. Mm -hmm. Right, so that came from Monsanto yeah. that was then bought by Bayer just recently, and now they have massive lawsuits. So one side, one side, the scientists are saying, uh, I don't, it's glucose, 
I forgot the name, the scientific name for the chemical that's in Roundup that kills the weeds. That kills people. But well, it's the same stuff it. that's in Agent Orange too. So really? on some people, yeah. they're like scientific guys say, no, it's not a problem. And then you have a whole other set of scientists that say, nope, this is a problem. Yeah. Including the World Health Organization in front of us, taken to the UN. So now the lawsuits are going through. They just lost a case and they were, at least in the, in the trial, the jury awarded the plaintiffs two billion dollars against Bayer. Oh my God. So, you know, that's where I think a lot of these issues are coming from is, is in truly in the United States and in the world, but definitely the United States, the press and the scientific community are no longer 100% independent bodies. They're, they are very, very, very t twisted based on where money is coming in. That is a well-known fact now. And so parents are like, so you want every child to get this thing in their body, what's in it, I don't trust you. And so they're erring on the side of, I don't know, for, and that's versus, I 100% trust the people in the white coats because they're scientists. People are getting smarter though. They're becoming yeah. more aware and the veils are getting lifted. Well, and know. I think part of it too, just having access to be able to research something. And also, again, that level of scientific understanding to know when you need to start digging deeper yeah. into like, I can read this thing, and this sounds scary because it's got a lot of syllables in it. It's like, okay, well, <laughs> research that because it's got chemicals in it. Motherfucker, literally everything is made of chemicals. Clearly, you did not go to chemistry class because the fucking periodic table is everything. So chemicals aren't scary. Chemicals in different combinations are dangerous. So research, <laughs> well, it's like research, you know, if you don't know what something is, keep diving in. I mean, yeah. it's like basically it's your Wikipedia, you know, black hole that you'll get into. I mean, use a better source than Wikipedia, but like but keep clicking, keep We're getting in, keep so, getting yeah, in. Yeah, so Warren, don't take it at face value. Brooke, Warren, I like you. Yeah, he, Warren's pretty questions. awesome. Uh, he says so two things here. Uh, follow the money and who has more to lose, question mark. So that's always been my thing too. Is always wondering what is the where is the incentive of the individuals involved, you know? Yeah. So from all of it, whether it's uh, conversations about sugar or health of children or whatever, you know, that's that's where all the money is, and we can see the pro we see the problems that are going on in society, and a lot of it is directly related to the benefits that mm -hmm. some individuals and companies have to to push their agenda on society. I remember I was watching this show or this documentary and there was a demonstration outside of a school because the school said that we're no longer going to allow sugar filled drinks and snacks in our vending machine and the parents protested. I remember that. Because Timmy that couldn't insane. go get a Snicker bar and a Coke and during, well, even like are a, you fucking serious? What's the show uh, related to the family and stuff and the kid has autism, it's a fantastic show, um, Parenthood. And the kid has autism, but they were working with Skittles and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, like, for autism especially, like, feeding them, like, a high-sugar intake and things like that is just, like... It's really detrimental. It's awful, yeah. So I'm just... I'm just but there are scientific papers that say that parents sugar is not an issue. It's just a carbohydrate, and you need carbohydrates. So what is the problem? Food, Inc. This is what I'm saying. So this is kind of where I think a lot of this comes from. Yeah. Is that it's like, yeah, but okay, but, but on, on th this issue... All the scientists are 100% ethical, and they're doing all the right things. But on those issues, I understand where you have some well, problems. Well, a lot of people have so many autoimmune issues because they have leaky gut, and all of our autoimmune issues start in the gut, the majority yep. of them, 8%. So. Yeah. And also emotional things, I think. Oh, also. yeah. That's, yeah, th so that's when the are, metaphysical aspect, and people mm -hmm. block that down when they're told to take this pill, and yeah. then they take this pill, and that makes them feel better, and then they get experience another symptom, and they take this pill. Yeah. So, really cool stuff. Do we have another question here? I know we're just wait, getting but that was, Wait, wait, wait. I oh, have another oh, question because yo. we started with the whole reason we got yeah, on the science and math was that because, okay, so, okay, I have an even more interesting question that I think will play into math and science and stuff like teaching children about finance and home purchases, balancing bank yeah. accounts, writing checks and things like that, um, I feel like is a very huge fundamental aspect of growing into adulthood that, uh, you know, my partner is in the mortgage industry and she sees people that make this much, who have a home that's this much, and they're in this much debt. Yeah. And, you know, and, and it's like, how do people get themselves in this situation? I love the American dream. Learn. Keep on going. Right, so then how are we gonna teach our so children that and how is that fundamental? I have an awesome example for this. Yeah. So at the Carios, the kids were part of budget conversations. So they learned a lot that way. Awesome. And they would earn money and they would, we could, we could 
but anytime kids could go request to go on a field trip, go to the store, whatever, he would take them, they would have their money, and they'd have to figure out, like the little kids, figure out what they wanted to buy and how much money they had, and we did not help them. They had to figure it out. So oh, I get a short story. They had story. a handful of coins, that's what they figured out. So that really helped them. Another thing that it's all project-based learning. So one time I took my kids on a three-week trip, and I said, this is how much money we have for the three weeks. I think it was like $3,500. How many kids did you have to do? Four. So we drove mm -hmm. to California, <laughs> and <laughs> and we had all this. And like, you guys get to figure out how much money we spend each day. You determine where we're going to eat. Like, all of this. This is where we're going to stay, everything. Like, let's work out the budget. And so we figured it out, and I don't remember what the number was. Let's just say it was like $60 a day for food as okay. we're driving, the three days it took us to drive. Mm -hmm. So one day, they were all tired of eating drive through And they're like, well, we want a steak. I was going to say, let's go get steak. That's exactly. <laughs> so we're in, we're in Amarillo, and they want a steak. And I'm like, okay, well, where do you want to go? And plus, we had a time frame. We wanted to get to the next stop by you know like midnight. I'm like, where do you guys want to go? We're not going to go sit down and get steak or whatever. So we ended up at Sizzler, and yeah, and we're there. Oh, and not even Golden Corral? No, Man. <laughs> oh my God, Golden Corral is their favorite. Mm -hmm. So we're, we get there, and we're all looking at the menu, and we're like, this is $13, this is $17. And we're, like, oh. and we're all like pissed off they're going to be spending their money on steak, but they, at this point, the three boys are like, we have to have steak. So we all go way over the budget, and they realize that, oh shit, we've used the budget for the next day too. Did you not let them eat the next day? Oh, they had to decide. So I'm just along for the ride on this thing. So they're like, okay, let's go to the grocery store. So we go to the grocery store and lift off of bread and like cheese the next day. But yeah, yeah they, they learned really quickly. And to this day, like my, that lesson, my oldest was 15 at the time, 16, 15, 14, something like that. He's so good with his money because he's like, nope. I'm, <laughs> nope. I'm never eating bread so, and cheese again. So <laughs> I, I want to show you this so photo. Look at this. I want to see if we can. I don't know. Emily, like, is that coming through? What is it? Is that coming through? Uh, yeah. So that's little Issa. Yesterday, that's my. That's the almost five-year-old. Yesterday, he walked up to his mom and myself and said, "Can I clean your shoes for money? Awesome. Can you pay me to clean your shoes?" And we're like, "Where'd you come up with this cash? idea?" Like, no, no, like, "Where'd you come up with this idea?" So I. What he didn't tell you I'm, is he may or may not have accidentally made them dirty on purpose. That's fine. That's right. entrepreneurial, 100%. percent so he Create yeah, a problem that you can then I've solve. I've always known that this kid was like, had that skill inside of him, right? This and is the one in your family photo who's like doing all the crazy stuff? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be an entrepreneur, 100%. 100%. Yeah. He's gonna yeah he at least has those traits in him, but I think he I think he will eventually be that route, right? That's the self-directed thing we don't really know, but he has these traits. And so specifically for him, we do not... I mean, it's hard not to spoil him and give him stuff, but we really try to make him buy the stuff because he really, that's him with the collection of superheroes. Yes. So, so that was a, about a year and a half. No, it was about a year ago because that's, that's my new house. So about a year ago, that's the collection. He took the photo because he wanted to make money, and so he ended up doing a bake sale, and he really created a lot of the stuff. He, the industrious was nice enough to host him. He made 65 bucks. We made him talk to the people. So this is a little four-year-old talking to people and like you want to buy my cookies and all this kind of stuff right it was really really good no to that too and yeah. it worked really well but that's brilliant so that's the thing with him is that we'll buy what we want to buy with it but mostly we say where's your money and he he doesn't he doesn't like to save it he likes to just immediately that's spend it so he's learned now to try to save it so yesterday when i asked him what are you going to do with the money he goes i'm going to save it because he's already gone through a few of these boom and bust cycles in his world and so now he's about hustling, he's gonna clean the shoes, he's got the money, and he's saving the money for a bigger thing. So I actually expanded the project a little bit for him last night, which was, so little Noah came over, here's the one-year-old, he's 16 months almost, or 16 months. So he came over and started to also rub on the shoes and try to clean them. And so I said, look, as, your, as the big brother, you should help teach your younger brother and give him a little bit of money. He's like, mommy, why, 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 why is he need money? So he doesn't need money, but you can help him learn about money and so now that now it's like how can he learn to acquire money for himself by working hard and hustling and saving it while also simultaneously supporting his younger brother and teaching and letting him learn through him or outsource and do quadruple the work and eventually get a tiny cut eventually oh, what's up? <laughs> yes that's the next level of skill like yeah. once you let noah do that you you get a little bit of the money or whatever and you brokered the deal yeah so that's the next development for him so in our case it's like where's your money 
Yeah. No, yeah, you, he's like, I won't cop to Marvel. I don't want to do this. Like, awesome, go make some money. Yeah. And he doesn't like to, because of course, like that requires work, yeah. but he's learning. That's so I just, cool, we though. just don't give it to him. Yeah. So that's at least one contribution to the story. On the other side, my, fit, my 13 year old could care less about, about money what? or about oh, stuff. Same. So it's oh, like, no, she cares about stuff. She just, well, I guess, like, doesn't care if it gets taken away or lost or damaged. Yeah. Yeah. I really want that. Money. Like, work for a lot of time. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Just unmotivated by it. Yeah. As of right now, anyways. So. Yeah. But the other one, he's like scheming all day long. Dad, how do you make money? How do you make more money? Hey, Dad, go to make some money for me and us. Us. For us. Yeah. <laughs> Did you make money for us today? That kind of You're stuff. He's like, hey, yeah, I did, son. That was like crazy, right? Well, so, okay, so, but what's your answer about, um, you said you had a plan for that, like financial understanding for how to, oh, you mean in that the was school? it, right? But just the so lesson, really, just it's application. Like the financial planning, it's, at, it's including in everything, including it in the family budget, including it in grocery shopping. You know, involving like, them. This is the menu for the week. Help let them help help her let her help make the menu. Like okay, take her to the grocery store. This is what it all costs. Add it up as you're going. This is what this meal costs. This is, and they start like as they're part of it. They start understanding and they start seeing. And then you show them this is how much money comes in. This is everything else. Oh, you want to add a new pair of shoes for two hundred dollars? <laughs> What's not being right. paid? Right. 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 So like, that's budgeting and application, which is I mean so right. valuable but like what about i mean like what's your stance on teaching about investments and investing into your future like into because your school's going to go up through 12 mm -hmm. right so like up through high school and stuff what those financial yeah, yeah. there's a lot of people gonna, that just want to know her, her now he's 16 he just turned 16 mm -hmm. but he's 50 her 15 year old started to figure out wanting to ask questions like what's stocks and yeah he's so he's taking he's taking a whole bunch of free online classes on the stock market and learning about investing and I set up a Robinhood account in my main program, and he's been playing with that. I didn't say that. Um, and he's, you know, he he's made a lot of money and he's lost a lot of money, but he's learning it. And um, like my oldest is a big time saver. I think I love his personality too. Like how that's I'm like you're like how, describing a kid that I don't see. My mind, daughter so. will never save a penny. In yeah, life. same. We can like, never get our daughters together. <laughs> like, we cannot do it. It's like nuclear. I'm going to live down the street from you and people. We, no. <laughs> She's going down the street. Keep yours inside. Keep yours inside. We're going to get walkie talkies to make Other it faster. Or they'll be the best sisters ever and it'll be great for them. That's Honestly, sure. that's, I know. I'm like, I do feel like they would be kindred spirits and yeah. hopefully lift one another. But. So I think from the financial planning thing, we did a couple of different things where we taught them. We've never given them an allowance. It's always earn the money, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And then talk to them about, okay, it's up to you, but why don't you put 10% aside to give to someone, give to the church, tithes, charity, whatever. I like that. Put, you know, and then from there, what, are, what is it you were saving to buy? So put that money aside. Is it 10%, 20%, 50%? Um, like set up those buckets. So and they work out like a budget report to figure out what the percentage yeah. is before they and allot that? Really little, just we use glass jars mm -hmm. and show them, okay, this is your savings. This is your, you know, spending. Smart. This is your investing. You know, you know, this is your emergency fund. You know what I did with Issa? We got rid of giving him coins. Oh, yeah, because it confuses the hell out of him. Yeah, he's like, well, I'm rich. He's like, oh, got all these coins. <laughs> oh, honey, my money is. Yeah, they were like, stop. And so now it's just dollar bills and above because now he can count. And, yeah. You know, and only dollar bills because, like, the, the piece of paper does worth 10 and the one that's super confusing yeah. again for some of them. So, yeah. anyway. Awesome. See, my grandma, when I was in you know, elementary-ish age and I lived in Germany, I had no friggin' concept of how American money worked and that's what they taught us in school when you're practicing money. Yeah. So my grandma basically set up a store when they came to visit once and you know this thing cost you know 25 cents and this thing cost whatever. So she got her coin purse out of her purse and gave me a handful of money. And then I had to do all of the various transactions like paying for this stuff. And when we got to the end, you know, she counted out how much I gave her versus how much I was supposed to, because I was just like, here's some money. And she showed me how much that I like overpaid, and I was furious that she stole from me. <laughs> and then the next round of store we played, I mean, I was just like, motherfucker. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, and it like kind of helped. So I mean, like hands-on, like connecting. Yeah. Why? Like tangibly connecting. Yeah. And balancing your money. Because. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say, I mean, the dollar thing is, you know, it kind of makes sense, but there is something to be learned of having to break down a large item into smaller pieces correctly and in well, multiple we'll, different we'll combinations. I just, 
just know I've had these issues with him so far, so instead of just kicked up. Well, that way, away. I mean, sounds like you know he can have his little like sock full of coins, and you know. No, it's brilliant. I mean, I think you're a lot further than most parents. Like, for instance, I'm like, why am I not doing this with my kid? So. Oh well, that, that's what the role is just learning that. from each other. Like, you leave your stuff around. I'm gonna take it, and it's gonna be mine, and then you're gonna have to pay to get it out. So that's, that's how my partner was raised, <laughs> and it's working out really well. Yeah. The house has <laughs> never been cleaner. The house has <laughs> never been cleaner, so it's really nice. Uh oh, we got we got Eric Waller to just join us. Hi, Eric. Ellis, Peggy. Hi, Peggy. Michael Tazan. That's my grandma's name. So Eric's Amy. awesome. Eric's a CEO in Fort Worth. He's a really awesome dude. Oh. Yeah, he's got his own regular Joe CEO, I think, is his Facebook. I like that. Right. He, he's trying to like do video like this, but he's not as pretty as I am, so it's just he's just trying. <sighs> I'm about to get a mean text message he's from him. Winning. Oh, boy. oh boy, here we go. No makeup either. Yeah, I don't even make up. I, I have no makeup. Wakes up with. Do him. Oh, oh snap. No. I love doing But I do love guys. Eric. Hold on, I will say I love Eric. I'll no, let's not. Let's just change something. Change your change something. Change something. No, no. And we can go to Emily's drag event. No, that's less I'll draw your change. eyebrows up on your forehead. Yes. Conceal yes. your eyebrows and make that your Do them like divine. That would be amazing. What would you say? You can hide the Conceal eyebrow? Conceal your eyebrows. You use like glue Elmer's stick. Glue stick. <laughs> and then keep building up in layers of toothbrushes as flat as you can. And you keep layering it up as it dries. And then eventually by like the third layer, you powder it really good. And then you can have no eyebrows. They're gone. And then I would draw your eyebrows up on your forehead. And so you crease mean like bone, like this bone right here, would be your eyebrow. What? I, let's do it. Come well, on. Well, I don't have anything with me right now. She's like, where's your bag? <laughs> okay, what's good? My kid's 120 pounds. You can't just like. Okay, well, let's self directed MacGyver this. Who has Sharpies <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> a Sharpie won't go. No, his beard would be a problem. My Halloween client so that me every year has hair like that. And I'm like, Taylor, I swear to God, shave your freaking hair down. And he, sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. I have to glue stick his entire beard. Oh, it's a disaster. Whatever. The one with the horns. Yeah. That dude. Yeah, look at Eric. Eric's like, yeah. Eric's saying, saying, like, that's the price I pay for being so pretty. Is like, <laughs> fuck you, man. So Eric's my <laughs> private point buddy. He, uh, I'm, I'm saying this in a way that maybe he gets the point. Like, he invites me whenever he, he gets a private jet for his business. And they, you know, they have to fly him around or whatever to, to do any special deals. So I think he's he's always inviting me on those jet drives. Eric, they went without us. I like private jets. We totally did, we did a show. We haven't actually released those episodes yet, but he and I did a whole like four hours of filming, just chatting all the way to New York and back. So it was pretty awesome. Fun. Yeah. So we need to That's do this. Cool. We can bring all this equipment That'd be onto. Fun. Yeah. I wish we could live stream. I know the satellite link on the jet might be might be expensive. That'd be pretty sick. So, anyways. I'm feeling it. Well, good. I think we uh, we're about to hit the one hour mark. So, well, a little past, obviously, now. So, thank you so much. I know you've got a jet. You're, yeah. you're looking to um, cut a big check for our school. So, thank you so much. Yes. Let us know how the banker. Enroll your daughter. Let us know if the banker needs proof that you really want to withdraw that big of funds for this new organization. Just let me know how that goes. I will let you know how that goes. So, uh, thank you so much. Thank for you. those that are watching on Twitch, thank you. For those that are thank on Facebook, you. thank you so much. And I think we also dropped some of these videos on Instagram. So this has been a fun day. And thank you for being such a sport. You like just, yeah. Yeah. I invited Alex like three seconds before we went live, so. I think that was the best tactic possible because I don't like being you on couldn't camera. Know, you couldn't think about no. it? I want, well, you know, I like to welcome a challenge. That's why I did that panel this with you. That's that self-directed learning thing. You're like, hey, what's the worst that could happen? I don't, I don't like it, but uh, I tell myself that I like it and I get through it and so, I'm happy I did. So good. good. Thanks for having me. Abe Nadimi? Yes. Emily Francis. Oh, Sandra Dixon, Miss Painted Lady. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. May. <laughs> she said May. 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 <laughs>